Alright, let's take a look at Elite Code 1269, number of ways to stay in the same place after some steps. So we're given in a steps, so the number of moves or turns we can take, and then a, a length of the array that we're working with. Um, and then uh, our goal is to return the number of ways there are to stay at index zero. So we start at index zero and after three moves or three turns, we want to see how many different ways there were to stay at index zero. And at each turn, we can either move left, stay in the same spot, or move right. So this is a pretty good, this is a really good problem for recursive DFS plus memo. And um, I think it's so intuitive. This is a very, uh, this should be very straightforward if you watched my previous uh, question, which was, um, student attendance records. Um, I started out by doing that problem with recursive DFS, but it timed out because the constraints were a little bit high. But uh, for this question, the constraints are pretty low and um, this is a perfect problem for recursive DFS plus memo. So let's take a look at uh, how we can visualize this in a tree format. So basically we're gonna just keep track of two variables. Um, so we have two parameters for this DFS method that we're gonna create and we're gonna just uh, update these two variables every time. So what are they? They're, it's the steps remaining variable and the x position. Um, so basically, let's say, let's take this first one, for example, we have the array of length 2. Um, also, what that means by array of length 2 is we start at index 0, right? We start at index 0, so um, the array length means that it's going to the right. So if you start at array 0, then you can only um, go right at this uh, first position. Um, yeah, the array is is to the right of um, to the right of index zero. So the array of length two would look like this, right? So index zero and index one. Um, yeah. So basically, when you're so so also you if you go out of bounds. Oh yeah, there's another constraint that says the pointer should not be placed outside of the array at any time. So if we ever go outside of these bounds, if we go to the index of negative one. Or if we go to the index of two, then we're out of bounds, right? So those are two other terminating conditions we can take care of in our recursion. So, okay, so let's look at this example, this first example. Let's see how we can visualize it with a tree. So we have three steps remaining and our x position is at zero. We have three choices at every turn, right? We can either move left, stay in the same spot, or move right. So moving left would cause our, so obviously everything in this second level would mean that we would have one less step remaining. Um, so obviously from three down to from three down to two and then the second value is the, the main one we care about which is the x position right so if we go left our x position goes down one if we stay in the same place our x position stays the same if we go to the right our x position moves up by one so pretty much you know if this second value ever goes you know above the length or goes below zero then we can just terminate early so this branch will just terminate and return zero and then, um, so eventually, once we reach um, zero steps remaining, and simultaneously, if the x position is also zero, then that will return one, right? So this um, this leaf will return one all the way back up to the top. And then, um, let's see, so I guess this, this branch, I didn't write it out, but you can imagine that if you were to move left from, from this position, you would also get to a um, end result of zero, zero. So, there's four possible ways, right, that will return uh, um, a x position of zero when there's zero steps remaining. So, um, you know, everything else will return zero, and those four um, possible methods or paths will return a value of one. So eventually, you'll get a answer of one or answer of four combined. And yeah, so let's let's see how exactly this can. Um, be written in code. It's very easy to implement in code. And so uh, I'll kind of show you. So I use cache just because of how powerful it is to memorize my, my, each of my calls. But I can show you what it looks like without using cache, um, the, the old school way, if you will. <laughs> so basically we have our, um, so I'm going to get to this pruning step in a second. But um, the, the out of bounds conditions are here. Right, so if the index that we're at is greater than or equal to the array length, then it's it's overstepped to the right. Um, if their index is less than zero, then we've overstepped to the left. 
aka like we've gone out of bounds to the left. So in each of these two cases, then we should return zero. So then the the case where we return one is when the steps is zero and the index is zero. And um, I guess this this notation just means that um, if the steps is zero but the index is not zero, then you should also return zero. Um, yeah. So then like you know basically you'll just have a temp variable which will keep track of the answers from the three different DFS calls right because you can try all three different combinations at each uh, uh, at each turn right you can you can either go left you can stay at the same place or go right and then at the end you should just return the the modded value at each step um, so what it looks like with a cache is just um, if we were to cache it, then we can just say cache of um, steps index equals temp, and then we'll just return um, equals temp mod, and then we can return um, cache of steps index, and then also we'll have to just do a check here. So if if steps index in cache then return cache of steps index right so this will just go check to see if we've already come across this exact same sub problem before and if we have then we'll just return whatever was cached in there earlier so um, oh yeah back to the pruning right so basically another optimization we can take is if there's not enough remaining steps and our distance from our current location back to the origin is greater than the number of steps we have remaining then obviously what's the point of trying to explore that path there's there's no way that you know let's say we're at position let, let's say we're at position let's say we're at position you know whatever this is five or something four index four and we only have one step remaining right what's why would we even bother with this right one step is only going to get us down to three we there's no way to get from this current position back down to zero Right, so we can immediately just you know short circuit and prune is, is what they call it. So we can just immediately return zero and stop execution here. So that's the pruning that we do. And yeah, so let me show you this uh, cache method. So with the cache, this is what it will look like. Um, right, so, so um, I just like to use this uh, built-in LRU funk tools cache on, in Python, which is pretty nice. So you can get rid of these uh, hard-coded, you know, or I mean, sorry, not hard-coded, but just like annoying things to write. You, you don't have to write that stuff. It'll cache the results of the different steps slash index combinations for you and see if it exists. So, yep, that is how to do this problem. If you guys have any questions, please... Um, Uh oh, what did I do? What did I do? Yep, okay, so if you guys have any questions about this, leave in the comments. If you have any questions you want me to uh, explain, leave in the comments. If you have any feedback for me, please go ahead, let me know. And thanks for watching.